The Swiss Family Robinson, Chapter 1, The Shipwreck. For seven days, our ship had been tossed at sea. The broken masts had gone overboard. Leaks had sprung everywhere, and the water was rising rapidly as the raging storm grew stronger. My wife, Elizabeth, gathered our four young sons around her in our cabin. She was encouraging them with calm and loving words. This was not the scene we had pictured when we set out from Switzerland to establish a new colony. Amid the roar of the thundering waves, I suddenly heard a seaman cry. Land! Land! At the same instant, the ship struck something with a jolt that threw everyone to the deck of the cabin. Above the dreadful sounds of the ship breaking up, I heard the captain shout, Lower the lifeboats! Abandon ship! Abandon ship! I exclaimed. The words went like a dagger through my heart. But seeing my children's terror, I hid my own fear. Take courage, my boys, I cried. We're all still above water. There is land nearby. Let's do our best to reach it. With that, I went up on deck. Imagine my horror when I saw all the lifeboats out on the water. The crew had abandoned us. But as I looked around in despair, I realized that our situation was not hopeless. Although the bow of the ship had been destroyed, our cabin remained unbroken in the stern. I could just make out some land through the rain. I returned to my family and forced a smile. If the wind and waves die down tomorrow, we can go ashore. Then we must find food, said my wife. We'll need all our strength tomorrow. After a good supper, the three youngest boys, Ernest, 13, Jack, 11, and Franz, 8, were soon asleep. But at 15, Fritz was old enough to understand the danger and to stay up with us. Father, you and I can swim, he said. But don't you think we should make life preservers for mother and the boys? An excellent idea, I told Fritz. Let's make some right now in case we need to escape the ship during the night. We searched the ship and soon got hold of enough empty flasks and canisters. Connecting them together, we made life preservers, which we all quickly put on. Fritz and his brothers now slept soundly while Elizabeth and I kept watch all night. The next morning, we gathered on the remaining portion of the deck. Where are the sailors? Asked my youngest son, Franz. Have they taken away all the boats? Asked Jack. I nodded gravely. The sea will soon be calm enough for swimming, Fritz reassured his younger brothers. That's fine for you and father, exclaimed Ernest. But think of mother and the rest of us. Why not build a raft so we can all go ashore together? It would be difficult to build a raft that would carry us safely, I said. But let's think about that while we explore the ship to see what might be of use to us. While I checked on the food and water, my wife took Franz to help her feed the animals on board. Jack went to the captain's cabin. When he opened the door, out sprang two large but friendly dogs. Back in our cabin, we displayed our treasures. Fritz brought a couple of guns, powder flasks, and plenty of bullets. Ernest had nails, a saw, and a hammer, while other tools stuck out of his pockets. Look at these nice sharp hooks, said little Franz, proudly showing us a box of fish hooks. Well done, Franz, I said. Those may save our lives by keeping us fed. I have some good news, said my dear wife. Some useful animals are still alive. A cow, a donkey, two goats, six sheep, and a fine pig. Now we just have to figure out how to get ashore, I said. Can't we each get into a big tub and float there? Said Jack. I've often sailed like that around the pond at home. A splendid idea, I said. We soon found four tall wooden casks floating in the hold. After dragging them on deck, we managed, with some difficulty, to saw them in half. I was proud of our work, but my wife looked in dismay at the eight tubs. I'll never get into one of those, she declared. Just wait, I said. I arranged my tubs in a row, 
connecting them with planks along the bottom and sides. When I finished, I was confident our boat would be perfectly safe in smooth water. There was only one problem. Our boat was so heavy that we couldn't move it an inch. <laughs> 